Hey guys, it's Jason and this is First Look with Newsmakers Tech. Today we're taking a look at the IBM PS1, specifically the model 2011, like this one we purchased on eBay. The IBM PS1 line was originally released in 1990. It was IBM's second attempt at expanding into the home market after the disastrous launch of IBM PC Jr. five years prior. IBM's hope was that the small but reliable system paired with good customer support and small tweaks to make setup easy for novice computer users would be enough to convince consumers to choose IBM over the competition. A modem keyed standard in the IBM PS1 sold in the United States. This was done to facilitate its partnerships with Prodigy and Quantum for online support. The IBM PS1 model 2011 was the first offering in the series. It was quickly replaced due largely to its lack of expansion options. Other models also saw an upgrade to the Intel 386 processor. The Model 2011 had no ISA slots, however, IBM released a $169 ISA adapter card unit which permitted users to install standard ISA upgrade devices. An optional 30 megabit hard drive was produced along with a 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. Also, if you could afford it, you could get a $995 CD-ROM drive. Such drives were designed to fit under the PS1's case and connected using a Western Digital SCSI chip, or better known as the SCSI. IBM offered a ton of different options for the 2011 to fit consumers' needs. Our mid-tier system came with the optional 30 megabyte hard drive, but only 512K of RAM and retailed for about 1500 with some retailers, particularly Sears was able to sell it for several hundred dollars less due to partnerships with IBM. All 2011s came standard with an Intel 286 CPU running at 9 megahertz, 3.5 inch floppy disk drive, a 2400 baud modem, and MS-DOS 4.01 in ROM. Now we found our system on eBay for $61. The exterior looks pretty clean, however, three of the four rubber feet on the bottom of the unit are missing, and they're not easy to take off. So clearly it's seen some action. Don't ask me how. Scuzzy, scuzzy. <laughs> on the front of the system, you see the three and a half inch disk drive, badge, and power LED. Note, there is no power button or reset switch. That's because the PS1 requires the IBM E34 color display model 1990 to power the system, which we don't have. Whoops, looks like our team's going back to the interwebs. Well, not that it matters anymore, but on the back of the system, you'll find the EGA, CGA port, RGB port, printer port, keyboard and mouse ports, and the RG11 jack for the modem. Fun fact for you, the small case on the IBM PS1 was showing signs of developing into the tool-free case designs now common in the industry. The front plastic trim piece on the case can be removed, revealing a small tab which then frees the cover on the case to easily slide off. The PS1 line was replaced by the Aptiva line in 1994. The Aptiva was much more modern and powerful than the PS1, but also was in the form of a mini tower. It lasted until 2001 and was IBM's last attempt to find a place for itself in the consumer PC market. After discontinuing the Aptiva, IBM tried to direct consumers to its NetVista line, which was intended to be a small business system. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Be on the lookout for this IBM PS1 in the future videos, and I hope you're as excited as I am to see some of the many, 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 more than a few systems we're adding to our collection. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and comment down below. Have you had this computer? Have you used it? Did you mod it? What'd you do? You want to see something else? For more videos like this, go to Newsmakers Tech. And of course, if you'd like to be a sugar daddy or a sugar mama for the show, you can find us on Patreon. We appreciate that. We appreciate you. Thanks for watching. And be on the lookout for this and many, many other vintage, great vintage systems. See ya.